Hi guys. It is a gorgeous morning here in paradise. We're having the war of the leaf blowers. The war of the leaf blowers here in the Hollywood Hills <laughs> on this beautiful two Thursday morning. Uh, June 22nd, 2017. I'm supposed to be doing a Donald Trump dump the Trump the hive roundup rant this morning. I just don't have the I, I don't have the damn stomach for it. I just don't have the stomach for it. I'm sick and tired of the motherfucker. So instead of Donald Trump, we're gonna talk about Dudley Do Right. And uh <laughs> see, good lord. It, 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 you know it, this reminds me of you know when when Guy McPherson uh, talking about how the United States military was the world's third biggest until uh, Jimmy Carter made the uh, took the U.S. military from the world's third largest to the first largest, and uh, me making fun of uh, of uh, Guy McPherson's. Uh, knowledge of military history and I just made this little comment uh, just a about a five second comment during my report from Treebeard yesterday I asked the question does Canada <clears throat> have a military well uh, I guess Canada does have a military uh, and, and anyway so what Treebeard was talking about that he couldn't, he and his, I guess his ex-wife uh, were both wondering what the hell uh, the military is doing, the Canadian military, since we have to discover there is a Canadian military, what the hell are they doing invading their own country? Well, well no, no shit, Sherlock. Come on, Treebeard. Uh, uh, I, I think we know. I, I, I just took a wild guess what they were doing up there. <clears throat> so I know Fiesta Cranberry uh, wants to know, and Treebeard wants to know. So we're going to find out the big no shit Sherlock question. I don't have my no shit Sherlock button <clears throat> out here. Why is Canada invading its own country? And for this, I simply put in, uh, I, I googled <clears throat> Canadian military in the Arctic. And uh, th th these, these are just a few of the hits. A few of the hits. I noticed one of our Alert Tribes members sent me <clears throat> one of the stories that, uh, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember. Uh, maybe it was Sea Wanderer. Uh, anyway. Let's just look at, I don't know, maybe I got six or seven here for, for anybody who does not understand why Canada is invading its own country. <clears throat> Let's start out, I don't need, these are a bunch of Canadian, uh, various Canadian mainstream media sources. Here is Defending the Arctic. New security network in the works as world powers turn north. The, uh, the Canadian Department of National Defense is gearing up for an extensive overhaul of its Arctic monitoring systems as the ice melts and world powers turn their attention north. There you go. How about this scary name? Uh, so the military is working with private suppliers of something the department is calling the All Domain Situational Awareness Science and Technology Program. Jesus. And take a wild guess what this is all about. How about this one? climate change is making the north, meaning the far north of Canada, more accessible, thereby increasing economic activity and international interest in the Arctic. 
such increased Arctic activity as the uh, ice melts brings additional responsibilities for the Department of National Defense. Can you say resource wars? Here is from Canada's Defense News. Canadian military looks to expand Arctic footprint. The Canadian military is looking at expanding its logistics footprint in the Arctic as it sets the stage for a bigger presence in the barren and isolated region. Canadian officers say the improved logistics structure is required if the military is to meet the Canadian government's objectives in the part of, in, in the far north. Uh, there you go, this is one of these, uh, this is Army Lieutenant Colonel Luke St. Dennis, quote, we need to build on what we've got right now in terms of capacity. No shit. Sherlock. Uh, let's see, so they break it all down. What all, uh, the, the different, all the different ones, which I'm not going to, all the different exercises ramping up up there. Uh, <clears throat> the plans are by design pre-negotiated arrangements to facilitate the movement of people, material, equipment, and supplies. Do you think so? Since 2006, the government has emphasized its intention to significantly boost the military presence because oil, gas, and minerals in the Arctic are critical to the country's economic growth. Wow, this is, this is really, this is some deep political science we're learning. Okay, we're going to go over to the Canadian Global Affairs Institute. All right. To look at their policy statement titled the Canadian Armed Forces in the Arctic purposes capabilities and requirements Wow over the past 15 years the Canadian Armed Forces has been rebuilding its capacity to operate in the Arctic take a while guess why a changing Arctic environment can we say the collapse of the polar ice caps there's another way to say a changing Arctic environment coupled with expanding shipping routes and resource development promises to bring new activity and potential threats to the region as such uh, the military's role in the Arctic will only grow in importance. There you go. Uh, so, good lord, this is all breaking down. Uh, all broken down here for anybody who does not... Uh, understand this uh, and they're mainly what they're talking about over and over here is exercising sovereignty exercising sovereignty uh, and uh, you, you can guess what that is is military speak for Good Lord, this uh, 
goes on and on and on. This is everything they have mapped. Good Lord, all of the all all of these exercises going all over there, uh, breaking all all of this down. Uh, good Lord. Now it goes out to maritime forces, air power. Uh, anyway, what is the conclusion? Uh, the conclusion is, is that we're, is, is that we're going into an oil war. Uh, okay, a few more. Here is Operation Nanook. They just look at one. This is one of many. Operation Nanook. Uh, this is carried out across the Yukon, the Northwest Territories, and Nunavut, making it the largest military presence in Canada's north. Um, there you go. And it guards Canada's sovereignty and defends the country against threats in the region. Wow, do you think so? So what are the objectives of Operation Nanook? <clears throat> Number one, assert Canada's sovereignty over its northernmost regions. Number two, improve the way Canada's military operates in Arctic conditions. And don't forget, improve coordination in whole of government operations. And for anybody who does not understand why this is globally significant, why, why is Operation Nanook globally significant? The Arctic has large reserves of fossil fuels. There are also large mineral deposits, including gold and diamonds. All of this is drawing more and more commercial attention from Canada and other countries. Also, at the same time, climate change is gradually, is gradually melting the Arctic ice cap. This means that Arctic waters are easier to navigate every year and more ships enter the region. Air traffic in the north is also growing. This increase in sea and air traffic along with the new interest in oil and minerals brings new threats. Risks include sovereignty challenges. Sovereignty challenges called oil resource wars. Resource wars. Okay. And if you don't know who the other side of the war is, Canadian forces to expand training center as Russian, as Russia plans more bases in the Arctic. Yes. The military's new remote installation in Resolute Bay will become a hub that can support operations both science and defense oriented year-round if needed. Okay. As Russia continues to boost its military presence in the Arctic, the Canadian Armed Forces is planning to expand its Arctic Training Center. No shit, Sherlock, and they look at this going back to 20, 
13. Uh, other countries are also expanding their presence in the far north. Russia's defense ministry recently completed a military base on an island in its territory in the Arctic Ocean. Hmm, there you go. Russia plans to eventually build 13 airstrips and six other bases in its Arctic territories as Russia looks to exploit minerals, gas, and other resources in the region. There you go. Let's see. Uh, let's do one more. And this is where we start looking at the bigger picture. You, you, you notice that no one's talking about the United States invading Alaska. That's, that, that's going to be a whole nother rant. Uh, no one is talking about what's going on in, in our own country. But let's look at, let's bring NATO in, into the fold here for a little bit larger picture. <clears throat> How Russian advances in the Arctic are leaving NATO behind. It is hard to ignore the military buildup that is going on in the Arctic Ocean. As Russian cyber activities in the United States and military intervention in Syria dominate the headlines, the Russian bear has pursued a steady march forward much closer to Canada in the Arctic. Yes, Russia has moved ahead with several steps in its Arctic strategy in 2016, refurbishing military bases, constructing new airfields, building outposts. Yes, and now Russia has a nuclear-powered icebreaker heading that way. With Russia and the West itself at odds across the globe, is it time to, for Canadians to be worried about the Russian bear in the Arctic? And I think we all know what the answer to that question is. Uh, let's just, uh, this is a long analysis. Uh, this is one of these analysts, Mr. Hubert. I don't know who this guy is. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> This is NATO space. These are all NATO allies or close NATO friends. We should be increasing our Arctic surveillance. We should be building more icebreakers. Not in an aggressive way. Not in an aggressive way. But in a way that lets our Russian colleagues understand that we have a deep investment in the Arctic. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, that was Mr. Starvitas. That's Mr. Starvitas. So now we're going to listen, we're going to close this rant uh, with Rob Hubert, an expert in Arctic and offshore issues at the University of Calgary agrees Canadians need to keep a watchful eye on Russia in the north. Quote, history won't allow us to forget that a state that uses military force to change borders to achieve its political ob objectives usually does not stop that type of behavior until they meet a capability that can push 
back. We have to make sure we can provide that type of pushback with our NATO allies. It's saying you can't start pushing in the Arctic the way you have been pushing elsewhere. And uh, anybody who does not understand the implications uh, of, of, of what they're talking about here, guys. Now, here I go pissing off uh, my, my buddies in Canada. Uh, if, if anybody thinks that Putin is worried about Dudley Do-Right, uh, if Russia wants to go into Canada, it ain't the goddamn Canadian military that's going to push back against them. Uh, snidely whiplash will whip uh, Dudley Do-Right's ass in about five minutes. Uh, so take a wild guess who's going to get a phone call. And uh, that would be today, Mr. Donald Trump. Donald Trump will pick up the phone when Dudley Do-Right, the cartoon character of the Canadian military, says it looks like them Ruskies, or maybe even them Chinese, are making a play in the Canadian Arctic, and then we will all see what a resource war really looks like. And then I'm gonna wrap up this little rant and come back with a, just a couple of stories about global population. Bye guys.